Hello crafters and welcome to P2P Crafts Peninsula online craft show brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Crafts Show, our scrapbooking, mixed media and paper craft community. I'm your host, Wendy Stewart, and I'm absolutely delighted to be able to join you again to present a few more sessions to you. So P2P Crafts Online Peninsula Craft Show brings you many demonstrations and interviews with our talented retailers and guest artists. For all the details, please head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au. You can get all the up-to-date details of this show, plus links to all the guests we're going to have. Now, while you're there, please make sure you're on our email list so you can get all the details of all the upcoming events and updates of anything happening on the show and replays of all the links so you don't miss a thing because we don't want you to miss out on anything. And whether you're watching live on Facebook or a replay on Facebook or YouTube, we want to know you're there. So please say hello to us because we'd love to know that you're there. Ask any questions. We'll try and get them answered during this live or our guests will definitely go back and answer them after the show. So just make sure you ask and let us know you're there because we'd love to know that you're there and watching with us. So I'm so excited that it's time for me to introduce to you Michelle Brown, the creative director of this show and also the owner of the Mixed Media Art, Art Studio here in Mount Waverley, where we're broadcasting from. So let me just see if Michelle's ready and I'll bring her on. Here she is. Welcome, Michelle from Mixed Media Art. Hi, Wendy. It's nice to be on this side of the camera. I know it must be a really strange experience for you because you've done an amazing job of hosting all of the sessions so far, but now you get to be on the flip side. I do. I get some paint on my hands and share my love of crafting and mixed media as well. Wonderful. So, Michelle, can you tell our lovely viewers today what you're going to be demonstrating for us and what, what are you going to be exposing us to today, please? Yeah, so I thought we'd look at a few techniques around gel printing. Now, gel printing has been around for about, well, probably forever in a way, just sure. sorts of modern but the current generation of the gel print and the gel press has been around for about seven or eight years. And I know when I started out, it was all a little bit overwhelming and a little bit hard to have fun. So that's what I wanted to talk today about how we can have fun with gel printing. We'll do just some plain prints without any pressure. We'll do some with stencils. We'll do some with art foamies and create some really nice prints ahead of tomorrow's session where we turn our gel prints into art journals. Oh, that's amazing. Because I think, you know, we talked about it a little while ago. It can be quite overwhelming when you see a gel print for the first time because you have no idea. And I know I was lucky enough a couple of years ago when Cheryl Boglioli came to the show, never heard of gel printing at know what it was and to see all this magic happen and then to be able to learn from her and from you how to do it was incredible so I think everyone's in for a total treat today with you Michelle yeah and look some people might ask why do you want to print your own papers and I guess the thing that I love about it is that it's unique you can add your own flavor to yes. your project and you you can hardly even replicate your own prints that you really like so it's not like anyone's going to look at that and go oh that's a such and such paper or I can see you've got that it's um you're never going to have that problem and once you get started and learn how to have fun with it and let go that was my real challenge when I started out yes. with my engineering hat I wanted to be able to do step one step two step yeah, three and yeah. always get the end result and it just doesn't like that and as soon as you just sort of go stuff it I'm just going to play that's when the magic happens. And I don't think you could ever get two gel prints that are exactly the same. So my word of advice is take a photo or scan your gel print before you do anything to it because you'll never get it to be exactly the same. And don't fall in love with it because the next layer could be even more spectacular. Oh, exactly. And look, I've got some that I've got set aside that I probably will one day sort of trim and put sure. into frames. But others, like you said, or if you've got something you're not sure about and you want to do something else, just do it on a small part of it, then you don't have to ruin all of it as well. So yeah. there's a lot of ways that you can still build on it. And again, when I'm talking about gel printing, I'm not talking about creating a register or creating any fine art with it oh, or creating yeah. layers. We're just talking about making really simple pages right. and printed backgrounds that we can then using lots of different other ways and I think even for someone who's been doing it for a while you know you may not have got out your gel plates in a while so it's lovely that you're going to do this and give us all a refresher and a reminder of the steps and the techniques and the process to achieve the outcome that we want exactly so I'd like to challenge everyone today if you've got your gel print and you haven't used it for a while get it out if you did buy one from us over the last six years and you haven't used it yet definitely get it out and also if you don't have one yet we'll talk about our special at the end awesome. of our demonstration Awesome. Well, Michelle, I'm going to give you a moment just to get your camera ready and I'll come back to you in just a moment. Okay. Thank you. 
So there you go, everybody watching. Michelle's going to give us an amazing demonstration. I know I have fallen in love with gel printing and there are just so many things you can do with it, whether you've got just a basic, you know, an eight by four, a six by six, there's even brand new designs of, you know, different shapes you can get. And I'm sure Michelle will introduce you to them as we go along. So please enjoy, sit back. And all of those who haven't got their gel plates out in a while, you heard Michelle's challenge, so you know what you have to do, right? Here we go. I think Michelle's ready. So I'm just gonna cut to our demo screen. Demo screen. There you go, Michelle, all yours, take it away. Excellent. Thanks, Wendy. And hello, crafters, mixed media artists, and of course, art journalists. I am really excited, like I said, to be out here getting some paint on my hands and sharing with you my love of gel prints. So what I've got together today is a bit of a collection of some things we can have a play with, and you can find all of these in the mixed media art store as well. So we've got a range of paints here. I've got some of the Delusions paints and the mixed media and um, the Dina Wakely paints. I've got some... Um, Stencils, these ones are dark room doors, the A4 size ones or the large ones. I've got some art foamies that we can have a play with and we can talk about those. Michelle, your art I've... foamies are very clean. <gasps> I had just managed to clean them <laughs> recently so I could play with them again because, yes, they were getting a bit crazy. Um, I've got my favourite little um, brayer and we'll have a play with that. And, of course, I've got some prints that have already started. And then underneath all these layers... I've got my gel print, my gel plate. Now, this is a gel press gel plate, and we've been using this for many years, and it's still in pretty good condition. So what yeah. is a gel plate? It's a stable at room temperature monoprinting plate, and it's made from this gel by the same company that makes your um, shoe insoles. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I didn't so know they, that. Yeah, so they do um, medical grade products, but they also do this as well. So it's safe, not that you'd want to eat it but it's stable, like we said. And the reason that we use this instead of perhaps glass or more of traditional, you know, stamping or rubber is that it helps keep the paint open or makes it slower to dry. So it allows us to create some fantastic effects. Right. So, oh, and, of course, paper. So the paper that I like to use, yes. again, starting out simple office paper or if you've got something that's got just that little bit of a sheen on it, a little bit of um, a satin finish, right. and perhaps a little bit thicker. So this is about a 90 GSM. Okay. So a little bit thicker than office paper. But again, if you don't have that getting started, don't worry too much about it. Just get started. Okay. So what we're going to do first up, the first thing that quite often we find when someone's just starting out is the first thing is that we use too much paint. So we want to really think about not using too much paint. Right. And Michelle, does it have to be acrylic paint? Is that the best? Um, look, there's all sorts of different paints. I've seen people watercolour. I've seen people use gouache. I've seen people use all sorts of things. I like acrylic paint yes. because it's pretty reliable and we know that we're going to get a good finish from it and it's nice and bright. Awesome. So. Thank you. So I've put just two little drops on there. Yes. Use the bray. Now, we don't want to just go backwards and forwards or else we don't spread the paint. We actually need to roll it, come up and roll it again. Again, another trap for the beginners yes. now we don't want to waste this paint either because nothing is wasted no no we don't waste anything <laughs> no so i've got a whole heap of prints here and paper here and can you see that so all we want to do yes. is roll that off again lift and roll and then the same thing on this side just getting a little bit moving it around now it's quite warm in melbourne today so this paint dries a little bit quickly. Yeah. That's the other thing for beginners in classes. They want to stop and chat, which is lovely, of course, but in this case, you want to keep going. Now, this brayer is great because it's got a built-in roller, so we want to turn that over and sit it that way so it doesn't stick. Right. We then want to grab the... I've got a whole heap of prints on one side, so I'm going to print the back because when we do art journaling, I like to have colour on both sides. So oh, that's fantastic. Heap. Now, we're going to put it down. Now, I like the... 8 inch by 10 inch gel plate because I can use an A4 piece of paper right. and I don't get my hands dirty. Now if I was going to do card making I can then cut this up for card fronts, I can turn it of into course. art journals. I think it gives you a heap of flexibility. Okay, so that oh. gives us a little bit of an interesting pattern. Now I did actually clean my gel plate last night and you can see a little bit of that, that cleanliness. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Through. That's okay. And I don't clean it between layers as well. I just sort of keep going. So sort of with similar colours, I started with warm colours. I'll keep going with the warm colours. So just doing a few to get started. Thank you for going. choosing all my favourite colours to play with, Michelle. Oh, Very I'm much so appreciated. Good. And again, like as you've always heard me bang on about, get to know your paint. You know, you've got some are runnier. Agreed. Some are 
see through. So just have a play and then you sort of get to know what what different looks you get from different effects. And I think I'll be interested to see, as as you said, it's a very warm day in Melbourne, what your gel print is going to do, you know, what exactly. sorry, what your gel plate is going to do for you today. Yeah, so you don't need to know a lot about colour theory, but you do want to consider, because this paint is wet, yes. we are mixing it. So we want to use sort of complementary colours, so warm colours or cool colours, because yes. that'll help us sort of blend in the middle and not make so much mud. So here's We've another. We've made mud, haven't we, Michelle? Oh, it's easy to make mud <laughs> at some point. But if you sort of start with your warm colours, transfer through, and then you know, you're always sort of doing a few different prints. So here I've made a, you know, a print onto here. I'm using this one from the roll off from my brayer, and I've got some others that I know are going to need more layers on. So there we go. Oh, that's perfect. Um, yeah. Someone's being, one of my friends is being very cheeky and saying, did I bribe you to use those colours? No, I did not bribe Michelle. I didn't even well, know what colours she was going to use. strong word. <laughs> but maybe seeing Wendy in her purple top has encouraged Aww. me. Who knows? <laughs> I do tend to think. I'll take responsibility for that, Michelle. No I problem at all. I don't think much about colours just because um, otherwise I'd never get anything done. So I do really just sort of keep going. Right. Like you said, so starting off, just getting a few pages with some colour on and then we'll do a couple of techniques. So this is one that's just got a bit of something. But, oh, wow. again, I don't, I don't throw anything out. So we're just going to keep going, building up some layers. And if you don't like it, you know, there we go. Oh, that's stunning. Yeah. So now we've got a few with some colours down. And, again, you can see I haven't used much paint. That's not going to take long to dry. Absolutely. This first one I've done is basically already dry. So you right. really don't need a lot of paint. Um, but in cooler months, like it does take a little bit longer. You want to sort of lay them out. It takes a lot, a lot of room. Yes. Okay. So now I want to start using my art foamies. So art foamies are these foam carved stamps. They come in oh, hundreds and hundreds of different designs. So these are a few of my favourites at the moment. I've got this lovely zigzag for those that aren't circle people. Yes. Then I've got this fantastic orb, which is designed by Rebecca Meyer. And this one, oh, I can't think of what it's called. This is almost like a Star Wars one. I can't think of what, you know. Yeah, and to me, to me it's like an Aztec design more, more than a Star, oh, Star Trek okay. one. But that's okay. Yep. We'll go with, we'll go with Star Trek. I like Star I'm, Trek. Exactly. I don't mind at all. So what I want to do with this is starting to build up a few different things. I can use the art foam to create a design on my gel plate. Yes. But I could also use it to add some detail onto this one as well. So I might look at that and think, okay, maybe something a bit darker. What if I used something like this marine? Now, this Dina Wakely marine is a really nice dark blue. Dina talks about using it as her black almost oh, right. instead of okay. using black, using it as that sort of really dark colour. Now, because I'm going to use the art foamy to pick up the paint, I want to put a little bit more on than I would if I was just doing a print. Okay. And, again, if you don't want to use the whole plate, you don't. But, you know, we're going to keep going. Limited space. Again, we don't want to waste that, so find somewhere else to brayer that off. Turn our brayer over. Yes. Look, if it gets stuck, it's not the end of the world. These are bulletproof. These brayers are great because they'll pop out. Right. Soak them in some water and they're, you know, good as you. They're bulletproof, absolutely bulletproof. So now I've got my gel print with my Dina Wakely Marine on it. I'm going to use this fantastic art foamy. I'm going to sit it down here, give it a bit of a press, just like you'd do any stamping. Now, can you see over there okay? Yes, I can see fine. Thank you, Michelle. Yep. We can and all see, yes. Stamp. Michelle, you're okay. not using a lot of pressure on that, I take it? No, not a lot at all because it is slippery. So it would move around. It's not like stamping with ink. Right. It is stamping with a thin layer of paint. So just a little bit of pressure. Okay. Look, you do need to be a little bit conscious about doing that. Now, see here we're creating, it's starting to create a design here. Yes. Can you see where the art foam is pulled up the paint? But then okay, I'm transferring yes. it over to here. So every time I press it down, I want to take off some more paint and then take that off the art foamy as well. So we can see now that I've got a print that's now getting quite interesting. Oh, it's got some lines paint. on it. Yeah, and maybe we could put in a bit more. So again, creating this picture here, but not overthinking it at all. This is why it's fun. You're just really not overthinking. And there's really no right and wrong, you know, whatever wonderful pattern you create. No, exactly. That's the great thing about mixed media. There are very few rules, only guidelines. And so some of the guidelines, oh, look, here's one that will match. 
uh, just use a bit less paint than you think. Yes. And look, if it turns out that it, you have too little and the technique doesn't work, that's fine. Just add a little bit more. And if you have too much, then just take that top layer off. Then the technique you were looking to use might work better on the layer underneath. Okay, ready? Yep. There we go. Oh, wow. There you can see the pattern that we've made with the marine. But you can also, can you see the little bits of the other colours? That was still on your, on your gel plate, which yeah. is coming beautifully to that. Exactly. Oh. Now, we can still see there's a little bit more here. So this could give us something interesting. So what I might do is choose something of a lighter colour. So this is the, what is it, laid-back lilac, the delusions. And this is all fairly dry. So what I can do, the layer okay. of paint closest to the gel print is still wet. So what I can do is use this colour yes. to reactivate the top. And again, just really go. carefully. Yeah. And see how I'm sort of using similar colour palette. Though you can do this with contrasting. Of course. Yep. And then get a clean sheet. Clean sheet of paper. I think this is going to be an interesting print, so I don't want to put this on top of something else. Right, okay. Okay, and give it a nice rub, it's like giving someone a back massage <laughs> that's not tickly. Okay, and then there we oh, go. Wow. So you can see that, and that's what we call it called the ghost print yes. of that one. So you can see we've got the stamping, we've then got the print that we pulled, yes. and then we've got that ghost print. So see Beautiful. the different effects. It's very different. It creates a very different look. Excellent. So let's do a couple more, and then we jump into stencils. So if I've got, where's another one? So here's another one that I did earlier. It's quite plain, but it's the start of a background, Absolutely. start of something. So we're going to think, oh, what colours might we do? Let's do... Ooh, a bit of a contrail, feeling a bit brave. Yeah, go on, Michelle, be brave, be brave. Again, knowing your paints. So let's go with this Dilusions Pale Sunshine. Now, she's got two very similar oranges. I'm hoping this is the more opaque one, but we shall see. If not, not to worry. Well, I think everybody's loving loving what you're doing from the comments. We even have a lovely visitor from the Netherlands joining us, and I'm oh, so scared you. I'm going to say her name wrong. <laughs> But well, I'm just going to say I... hello to Jolene, and I'm very sorry if I pronounced your name wrong all the way from the Netherlands. Oh, thank you for excellent. joining us, and thank you to everybody else who's joining us too. Yes, but they'll just be waking up. So now you can see I'm taking that orange off, and I'll see how that's coming yeah, through absolutely. as a contrast. Yeah. So you can definitely use those contrasting colours, but because this is already dry and we're adding this on top, it's not mixing. And because this is quite an opaque paint, we can see that it's sitting on top. Beautiful, Michelle. Beautiful. And you can sort of do a few, but you do need to get that paint off to get that impression. And then we can overlap. Okay, how am I going for time? You're going great, Michelle. You've got probably about another 10 minutes to go. Hate to be kicked off my own show. I That'd know, right? But rough, rules are rules, boss. <laughs> I know. Well, we've got a fantastic evening lined up, so we definitely cannot stand anyone. No. So first, just have a look at that. How cool oh, is that? That is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can still say that is a little bit wet, but I'm not going to set anything on top of that. No. Okay. Set that over there. Now this is also something that could be interesting, but I'm not sure. So you know, perhaps let's grab something like that. I think well, that's not that interesting. It's quite monotone. Okay. But let's sort of roughly line it up. Some people do a great job lining it up. I don't always bother. No, I usually eyeball it, Michelle, and, you know. Yeah. I and because the these are such big prints yes. and we know that our we're going to be cutting them up, it really doesn't matter. So there you go. Oh, wow. Look at that. I so love that. you can that. still see the pattern underneath. You can sort of get the impression of this. And then it's still got some of the dark bits in there as well. Well, I hope oh, you're inspiring those who are saying they've got gel plates and haven't used them yet. So I really oh, hope they're going to get them out and use them. So. And look, don't don't think about while you're making prints what you're going to do with them. I think that's sort of two different things. You know, we make them yes. and then we um, do things with them later. Couldn't okay, so next thing I'm going to do is use a stencil. So like I said, this is one of my favourite darkroom doors. I think it's called Diamond. Diamond and it's yeah. a nice cover, yeah. nice size. It'll cover that. Okay, so... I said 10 minutes. Okay, what are we going to do? Let's get some other colours on. Now, again, we need a 
sort of not quite as much paint as we would with an art foamy for a stencil. Maybe I should have checked them all. But, um, yeah, sort of in between you're just a plain print and an art foamy. But, okay. again, just have to play with it. And if your technique doesn't work, that's okay. And so you can all, you know, if it doesn't work the way you anticipate or hoped it would, you can always turn it into something else for your art journaling or card making or anything at all, really. Yeah. And the only thing is, you know, we're not using anything sort of pointy and sharp on the gel plate, Correct. so we're not going to wreck that. Um, we're storing it properly, so we're not worried about what might happen. Yes. Okay, so now we've got some paint down. We're going to stick our stencil on. Now what will happen with that is we'll get the pattern out. So what we might want to do is grab... Yeah, you know, a print that's already got a few bits and pieces on it. Right. This is another one of those really fun art foamies. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, and then we're just going to, again, kind of line it up. Now, it needs a little bit more pressure because we want it to come through the stencil. Stencils that are a bit too thick don't work quite as well with this. But, um, okay. These dark room door ones, Stencil Girl, they're all great. They're, <laughs> they're bulletproof. You can get so much paint on it and then you just give it a good soak and off it comes. So... There we go. Oh, look it's at that. A bit of pattern. Yeah. Like that. it's a bit, beautiful. That's Just okay. Beautiful. Now what I want is to try and take a bit more of this paint off in between. Okay. So I'm find another one that I did earlier. Right. Just add a bit of – oh, there we go. That even might be a better side to add some contrast. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> Very true. I know. Again, you sort of find you're working on several different prints at once. So if you do have something that you really like, set it aside or before you know it, you'll have um, got carried away. Absolutely. Okay. So that's got most of that paint beautiful. off. Beautiful. Now, the paint under the stencil on the gel plate is still damp. So what we can do is put on a different colour. So let's right. put on a bit of contrasting colour. This is the Dina Wakely Blushing. Okay. So we want to squeeze that on. Beautiful. And again, what we want to do is get the paint in between that stencil. So it needs a little bit more pressure than we'd normally do. Okay. Because yeah, you really want to get it into those grooves on that beautiful stencil. Yeah. That's right. Because it's warm here, I can see that it's drying a little bit faster than I would like. Okay, so maybe yes. talk less, spray more. <laughs> Michelle, there's a question just being asked by um, Anna. She asks, do you <laughs> prefer dilutions or Dina Wakely paints for gel printing? For gel printing, again, you need to know the properties of them. So the dilutions ones tend to be more translucent. Okay. And okay. they're great if, sort of for the backgrounds and for the the less opaque ones, whereas the dilutions ones, with a few exceptions, are more opaque. Right. I Sorry, the Dina The Dina Wakely one. ones, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, again, you need to know your paints. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Michelle. And I hope that answered your question. If not, just ask another one and we'll um, yeah. help you. So it really – now I've got some paper stuck on it because I cleaned that stencil yesterday. What was I doing? Okay. So what you saw me do there was pull the stencil off. I've set it over there because I want to get some paint off it, but I don't want to leave it too long or else it'll be stuck forever. Right. So now I've got the green that was there originally. I then took the green off on the stencil and put the pink through the stencil, and now I've taken the stencil off, and now we've created a two-tone print. Brilliant. So, yeah, when you're doing sort of something when you want it to sit on top or like the – um with the art foamage, then you want the, the paint a little bit more opaque so it will sit on top rather than be see-through. Definitely, yes. But again, experiment. Same colours with different opacencies, opacencies will give you different results. And so there we go. Beautiful, so Michelle. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, a different look. Okay, a couple more minutes. So now I can see I've still got some paint hanging around here. Yeah. So what colour might I want now? I might go light, dark, I don't know. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Okay. So, again, we know that the paint underneath this is still damp, so what we can do is pop another colour on top. On top, yes. Oh, maybe that needed a shake. Okay. And this is where this can work really well with a more translucent paint because it sort of will help activate it but not come as become this sort of overpowering but again they're just gel prints so give it a go have fun see what you can do absolutely and Michelle, are you ready to get painting? Mm -hmm. jane asks is what is a gel plate i know you may have answered that before but mm -hmm. maybe she didn't catch it and she, yeah. she says is it just an acrylic block no it's not an acrylic block but i'll let no. you explain please <laughs> exactly so let's just sit that so what a gel print is and here's a baby one 
So what it is is a stable room temperature monoprinting plate. So it's actually quite flexible, so it's not an acrylic block, and it's soft, and what that does is allow the paint to stay open longer, so we get to do all these great things. And for those of you that did Cheryl's class, you would have seen a take one, and like, I'm not going to stretch it that far because I'm too scared, <laughs> but she actually stretched it like to nearly a metre long, and we all just like nearly died. So... Yeah, so this is a little one, but we've got a bigger one here, the bigger one. But that's what it is. So it's made out of like your um, insoles of your shoots. Yeah. Is it? Is so, it like? Is it like silicon? No. It's similar, but it doesn't actually have silicon in it. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. It has that texture to it that yeah. your insoles are made out of. Yeah. And stuff, so it's so. like jelly. If you yeah, were jelly. eating yeah, jelly, exactly. you can yeah. make your own. But these are great because you don't need to put them in the fridge and you don't have to fluff around or remelt them. Yes. But yeah, right. it's like a jelly, like a firm jelly. And that just Jane, allows I hope that answers your specific. question. Okay. Ooh, oh, this my is God. going to be good, Michelle. I can feel it. Oh, you feel it? Yep. I don't know. I can feel I'm it. Right. Yep. And look, if you did leave that too long, if it wasn't enough paint, it could get stuck. But I think. Oh, oh there we go. Divine. So there you go. Yummy. Not necessarily what I was expecting, but you can still see there the original um, turquoise colour. Yes. yes. You can then see the pink. You can still see the pattern. And then that colour is picked up. Oh, so there we go. I hope that's given you a few ideas of how we can use stencils. Absolutely. Beautiful, so Michelle. Sort of Absolutely beautiful. I hope you've inspired everyone who hasn't done a bit of gel printing for a while to get them out maybe, you know, on Sunday after we finish the show and get, get cracking and making lots and lots of prints. <laughs> Excellent. Thank I you. So, you Michelle, I'm going to bring you, give you one moment to swap your camera over and then we can have a chat. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So isn't that fantastic? Gel printing is just hours and hours of fun. And let me assure you, you can never do just one or five or 10. You're going to be there for hours and hours. So give yourself time and just go for it. Don't think about it. Just have fun and create magic and just, you know, make a mess and don't worry about the outcome because it's going to be wonderful in the end. So I'm just going to wait for Michelle to get herself back onto camera. Yeah, no, no, you're right. I'll just keep chatting. So you're coming, you're coming. You just got to turn it around to yourself, Michelle. That's all. So um, so Michelle's going to come on in a moment and tell us all the things she has in the beautiful mixed media art store to do with gel printing. So she will be, okay, I think she's ready to go. <laughs> it's all good, Michelle. It's all good. Technology. Oh, exactly. Here we go. I've got you back. Oh. Yay. Oh, I pushed the wrong button, then you disappeared. It's all good. Thank you. And so that, not that was wonderful. So, Michelle, can I ask, please, could you tell everyone about what you might have, you know, to be able to do gel printing that you have in the beautiful mixed media art store <laughs> and um, everything about anything else you want to tell them about um, gel printing? Excellent. So, yeah, as Wendy said, the Mixed Media Art Store is based here in Mount Waverley and we have our online store as well. So I think the link's with this video, but you can find us at mixedmediaart.net. And in the shop, we've got the gel plates, we've got the 8x10s as well as the petites, the yeah. smaller shapes. We've got the brayers. We've got a huge range of stencils from Darkroom Door, um, Stencil Girl Crafters Workshop. And we've got a whole heap of art foamies as well. And especially for our viewers for the next week, we've got 15% off gel plates, brayers, art foamies and stencils. So that will turn up in your shopping cart. It's all there automatically. Right. Right through the Friday the 4th of December. So if you are thinking of getting some more art foamies, now's a good chance. If you haven't got that proper brayer because you thought you could get away with what you had, this is a good opportunity to get that. If you've been thinking about a gel plate forever, then this is your chance to jump into it. And hopefully we'll be having some classes again soon. But if not, watch this video replay, have a play with it, and then come and have a chat. Absolutely. And, Michelle, obviously if there's any questions, they can, you know, anyone can pop them into the comments or email you or reach out to you. I'm sure you're happy to help them if they've never bought a gel plate before as to how to go about it. Once again, I would just say, like, don't be overwhelmed. Just get one, start with it, play with it. You just need some paint a stencil and a gel plate, a brayer and some, you know, mm -hmm. A4 photocopy paper and you're good to go, really. Exactly. And look, some people do say, what size should I have it started yes. because I'm a card maker. I still think it's worth getting the 8 inch by 10 inch one yes. because then you can make large prints and cut them down. If Correct. you just have the smaller size for printing straight onto cards, it it's a very different effect. So I really think of it as creating that background that you then create as the, you know, the background for the card, just Absolutely. like you would some print. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, I've, 
uh, I won't tell you how many gel plates I have, but you know, I bought them all from you. Anyway, but I just think the uh, the big size, the eight by 10 gives you so much more versatility, so many more options because you you can't size up, but you can size down. So, you know, which is, which is fantastic. And don't forget to tell them all about the paint you've got as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we do have all the dilutions and most of the Dean Awakens in paint. So there are a bit of few supply issues at the moment. But um, yep, what we don't have in store will be um, getting in soon. So yeah, sure. if there's anything that you need that you can't find, um, the search bar on the website is wonderful because that's how I find most things in the shop yes. is by using the search bar. And if you're looking for paint, try paint and paints with and without an S. You know, those little um, quirks can help quirks. us as well. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, and Michelle, can you give everyone the website just one more time before I let you go so they know where to find you, where to shop, where to ask questions and all those good things? Excellent. So our main website is mixedmediaart.net and that's been around for 10 years sharing t tips and techniques and product reviews for over 10 years. Yeah. And then if you click on the shop online, it'll head over to our Shopify store. So that's Mixed Media Studio Shopify or something. So like I said, links here and then use the search bar. And that 15% off gel press, brayers, art foamies and stencils will automatically appear in your cart. Great. Well, it's been wonderful to have you on the other side of the camera, Michelle. It's been lovely for me to host you for a change and it's been great. I know we've all enjoyed your demo and enjoyed and learned so much from it. So I just want to say thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks right. so much. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. Bye now, okay. Michelle. So there you go, everybody. Lots of ideas, lots of techniques, lots of wonderful things you can do with gel plates. So please pop on to the Mixed Media Art website and check it all out. I have loved bringing you this, this session. Sorry, English, Wendy. And I'll be back for more later today. But until next time, may you have a wonderful day and have a crafty day. Bye for now.